But you're seeing across the board, you're short, and there's net shorts have been building these positions. Building, building, building these positions. I'll be surprised if maybe, I don't know, you can't predict what the market's going to do. I like to throw it out there, and if I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. But the shorts here, there's a lot of people short this market right now, saying we came back too fast. And you might say, you know that, that's right. Because the S&P 500 is now at 15% from its lows. And we say it's lows basically since July 1st. The Nasdaq's up 20% from its lows. You're like, holy shit, Nasdaq's up 20%. A lot of your names you're seeing up a lot more than that. But the S&P right now is still down 12% for the year. The Nasdaq is still down 18% for the year. That's how much we sold off. Now people are like, wow, things are still bad. We're probably going to be in a recession and, and, and you know we have inflation going crazy. And, and you saw those short positions and people go more net short, just going short. You might see a little bit more covering because right, it's dangerous. If the Fed comes out in September and just is a dead dovish, I don't know if they'll actually say we're not going to, I don't think they're going to say we're not raising rates because they just want to look because they got it so wrong in the past. They don't want to get it wrong this time. But they're going to say, hey, right now it's working. We're seeing inflation moderate, which is good. And we're also having a soft landing where we don't have to raise to the point where it's going to hurt the economy so much we do fall into a deep recession. If you don't agree we're in a recession now. But if that happens, it's going to be very tough to be short this market right now. You can be short certain sectors. Yes, that makes sense. But the overall market is going to go higher if the Fed is of September. And right now, looking at the next date and the readings, with energy being a big component, there's a good shot we are going to see inflation. Plus, with the interest rates, again, it's not like one month change, right? When it comes to inflation, you're seeing it moderate because what the Fed is doing is working. It's working. And it's going to continue to work. It's going to continue to be a drag on the cut to slow it down and pull, right? So think, think about you know, you're pulling something, right? If you're running and you got these ropes around you, you're holding someone back. You're not going to let them go. It's not like, oh, inflation, just, you, the ropes are still there. It's still slowing. That's what happens when you're raising interest rates. You're raising rates, you're slowing the economy down, and you're seeing it and you know, deleveraging in, in a lot of these sectors. However, you need to see it moderate. You don't want to see continue pulling, right? You continue pulling even harder, which means you're raising rates. Well, right now, what you're doing is working. You're starting to see that train where it's going downhill, you couldn't stop it. It's starting to slow, so, 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 so. And it should continue. This is the way it's worked in the past. It should continue to ease, which is going to make the Fed in a prime position to say, look, okay, we're doing our job. It's working right now. And let's see. And Powell's going to say, we're going to you know, take a look at the data. But right now, you know, we might help rate steady for the rest of the year. And if they say that, the markets are probably at least 10% undervalued right now. Maybe we still finish down for the year. But you're going to see a nice comeback, even further than we come back since July. Now, we look at sectors, and it's important to look at sectors, right? So who's going to benefit from this report? Banks. So a lot of times in the podcast, I say, well, this is what I said or whatever. Well, you know what? I was wrong in the banks. I told you to buy banks six months ago, and the whole entire market collapsed. I didn't think you see that much of a deleveraging that quickly, and I was wrong on that. But banks are in prime position. You might say, Frank, wait a minute. You know, they benefit from higher rates or net interest margins. But you're saying that the Fed could slow down. They're going to slow down. They're not going to reverse it. They're going to reverse it and go to zero again. At least not for the next 12 to 18 months. The 12 months, you could say. So they're benefiting right now. The net interest margins are incredibly, incredibly high. Right? The skyrocket. They're going to be over 30% from where they were last year. So, yeah, the Fed may slow, rate it, slow the rate of rate hikes or say, hey, we're going to hold still at least for the next six months or so. That's great for the banks. Because now they're generating a ton of business. Which that part of their industry sucked for such a long time. The interest margin were horrible at the lowest levels. You have interest rates low, but now they haven't really raised their rates on checking, savings, and things like that. But rates are going higher and higher where they lend money out and they're making a lot more money. Plus, now you have the double benefit, not just from fees, well, not just from this part of the business and interest margin, interest rates, but fees which was their bread and butter. But that kind of went away because the market collapsed so much. So you didn't see a lot of M&As. IPOs have been shelved. So, yeah, you said trading activity, okay. But, you know, for places like Goldman and stuff, I don't think Morgan Stanley's trading activity was as good. But now you're going to see both ends of this, where it's their fee structure and the interest rate structure. And you're hearing this from banks. They've been saying this for six, nine months when interest rates go higher. They're like, we are in prime position. And they are in prime position. That's why they're raising their dividends 
they're buying back stock because they're not really allowed to lend it all out because of crazy laws that still exist, which is nuts, but it ensures that our banks are in good standing. So you should own banks, even large ones. You can you know, go a little bit more aggressive. You can get the JP Morgans and do well, a nice dividend and some of the bigger ones and maybe, you know, the top four, whatever, as you research it in, but throw banks in your portfolio. If I get nice dividends, you're going to see strong growth. Earnings are going to explode going forward. But now you're taking kind of like that, that really deep recession off the table if you're selling that interest rate hike. And that's going to be great where you're going to see M&A activity come back, IPOs come back that have been shelved over the past six, nine months. And that's going to be great for a lot of these banks, investment banks, and a lot of these names. That's a sector that should benefit tremendously. Aggressive sectors that have gotten annihilated. Small caps, very aggressive with small caps. Cheapest they've ever been. Now this is great. And the dollar doesn't really hurt them, right? Because the dollar is good. Most of these companies, the small caps, they do business in the US. They don't do business overseas. So they don't get hurt as much. And that has been cheaper. Small caps compared to large caps have been cheaper than almost any time in well over a decade. Not to mention, if you're just looking from the price to growth perspective, it's never been cheaper other than last month. Still, it's at levels we haven't seen in my research dating back for 22 years. That's how much small caps sold off. So you have to look at how much these stocks sold off. You can't just look and say, well, I never looked at the small cap index. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm a little worried about the market. Well, if small caps only sold off 10% during this time frame, I'd say, well, you got to be careful. But they sold off 30, 35%. Some of these names are down 60, 70% in biotech. And you're looking at, at, at the technology companies, tech sector across the board, even large cap tech, have sold off tremendously. But you know what? Supply chains are easing. So start looking at companies that got hurt from supply chains because the next six months or next two quarters, they're probably going to say, hey, they're easing now and we have more predictability where... Even the car companies, we're going to get out more of these EVs now. More money with the chip bill that just passed. So chips companies, you know, tech companies, and also you know, semiconductor companies. Two areas you should be looking at, as well as small caps, as well as crypto, where you saw Ethereum get murdered. And I've been telling you, 90% of crypto is BS, and it's nice to see this filter out because this is where all the innovation is coming from. DAO, Metaverse, NFTs. DeFi, this is where it's coming from. The innovation, the innovation part is coming from. This is where everybody's going. This is where all the major technology companies are spending a ton of money. This is where innovation is coming. You got rid of a lot of the BS, but there's still 10% of this industry are great names that we've been researching. So we see Ethereum fall to 800. Ethereum's 1800 today. It was 800 a month ago. Bitcoin, you see them catch a bid. Now you're going to see all these institutions. You heard Fidelity come out and say, hey, we're going to offer 20% allocation to retirement accounts pretty soon. Be sure to listen to tomorrow's interview because it's a great interview about Bitcoin IRAs. Please listen to that. Give a little shout out. It's going to be a great interview tomorrow. But you're looking at Bitcoin, some of the good ones, some of the good names here. There's Avalanche and a couple others I won't mention, but we have a lot of good names on our portfolio that are starting to rebound sharply after selling off tremendously. Even the great names sold off tremendously because of deleveraging. Now you're going to see some of these names start bouncing back. You saw it already. Some of them are up 25%, 30%. Ford's up tremendously from its highs. If their supply chain eases, Ford is a great investment going forward. And I've been critical of them for a long time, all the way down. Because CEO has been lying about the supply chain concerns and the fact that they're like, we're going 100% EVs, even though right now they actually, Ford came out and said, we can't make money on EVs. That's why they just raised the price of the F-150 Lightning. They just raised the price of it. Because they can't, right now, they're not making money on their EVs. That's how much the costs have been ridden, batteries and everything across the board. So you have to sell more gas vehicles, and they're like, we're getting out of gas. No, you have to sell more gas vehicles, which they did last quarter, and you saw those numbers explode. It's so a great sales for the last month for it. So start looking at car companies. Start looking at names in the chip sector that have gotten hit hard. Because that's going to start easing right now. And now when you have the Fed saying, hey, you know what? We could put, again, it, it's one month of data. But it's positive. And usually when you see this, it's supposed to happen last month. I thought it happened last month where you saw easing. It's still relatively high. It's very high. But you want to see that trend coming down because it's going to result in the Fed being less aggressive. And that's the biggest risk of the market, of them raising too much, too high, and overshooting. And if they do that, that is the biggest risk of the market where you see stocks fall and you'll see bankruptcies, more deleveraging. But if they slow that pace right now, that's what the market's telling you. That's why we've seen a nice bounce. That's why we've seen a 10-year down at 1.7%. Sorry, 2.7%. We're seeing it down. It was over 3%.
So it, what the 10 years telling us is that the Fed is going to slow and may say, look, you know what? 3% may be the top when it comes to the Fed funds rate. And it should be. At least at 3%, and let's see for a couple months what happens. And if it's not working as well, then we go high. But based on the data today, you have to be willing to change your mind and sell stocks. If we see inflation start rising tremendously next month, heading into September, and they go 50 basis points, 75 basis point, which I think 75 is crazy. And they say, hey, you know what? It's going higher. We got to get more aggressive. That's different. You change your mind, you change your portfolio as of right now. Stocks should continue moving higher because the Fed, which is the most important thing, right? The most powerful organization on the planet by far is probably going to get dovish when it comes to September after they raise by 50 basis points, which is good news. So you're looking at small caps, catching a bid. They've been catching a bid. Banks, technology, crypto, semiconductors. You're looking at losers, I would say energy, only because it was so there's so much money that poured into that sector. And yes, $90 is an incredible number when you're looking at oil prices. I mean, remember when they were like futures were pricing in zero not long ago? Is that like like 18 months, two years ago? <laughs> you know, and, and we're looking at $40, good 50, then it went to 130, which is insane. But looking at stocks in general, and we've seen a lot of money coming out of these names over the past six weeks, they're still up tremendously over the past year past 12 months but when you look at institutional money they go to what's working and they poured into energy which was what the only thing that was working everything else was not working except for energy basically and just look at the s&p performance right now look at look at the yearly performance you see how much oil companies come down and down 35 percent from their highs there's still like 30 of the top 50 names are energy companies when you're looking at performance for the year throw tremendously so now you're going to see rotation. That's what you're seeing. If other things are working, they're going to rotate out of that and go into some more. Now this is telling you, all right, the leveraging is probably going to ease a little bit. You see more money pour into some of these aggressive sectors that got annihilated. Like biotech has gotten annihilated, annihilated. And the biggest funds, man, I don't know who's keeping track of those guys and how leveraged they were. But man, the force selling in that industry, I can't tell you how many great names in biotech they were trading below cash, and these are companies generating revenue. I'm not talking about just you know the, the speculative ones, you know, putting all the eggs in one basket. And hey, you know, going into phase two right now, we have positive phase one. If it doesn't work, it's going to go down 80. percent If it does, it'll go up 500. I'm not talking about those names. Good names that have great partnerships that are generating revenue have gotten annihilated. Annihilated. That's a sector that topped in February. I'm talking about February 2021. Around there, February March, and have consistently went down into November and then got annihilated when the Fed reversed course and said, hey, we have to raise rates. So this is very positive. This is something you should have been prepared for.